Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where we get creative with everything art, design, DIY, and lifestyle related. Today's video will be about drying flowers and doing dried floral arrangements. Now this was my first time doing a dried floral arrangement and drying flowers, so it was kind of experimental. Now for those of you who don't know me, I am planning my wedding and I'm experimenting with some different ideas for potential wedding centerpieces. This is one of those ideas. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but it was a lot of fun to do and I'll definitely be using the idea in the future for other projects. For this project, you will need clippers, scissors, yarn, hangers, green floral wire, unscented hairspray, and a vase. Oh, also a metal ring or some kind of vase, if you decide to make a wreath, of course. Just wanna make you all aware, this is a very time-consuming project. I actually shot this video over the course of several days, and then I waited three more weeks before shooting the rest of the footage, because it takes roughly three weeks for the flowers to dry. You will also need a dark and dry location to hang the flowers. I would recommend using a basement storage room, maybe a storage closet or an attic if you have one. Once you've finished your projects, you can spray them with unscented hairspray to kind of help hold everything together. I haven't sprayed my projects yet, but I probably need to. There is pollen involved and I'm hoping that the hairspray will kind of help keep that at bay. <laughs> well, without further ado, let's jump right on into the video. Day one of collecting plants to dry. I went through the flower bed with a pair of scissors because I couldn't find my clippers anywhere. I do not recommend. Once that was finished, I took all the plants down to my basement and began bunching them. If you choose to work on this indoors, just a warning, there are spiders and bugs in the plants, so you might wanna keep a shoe handy. Once all of that was finished, I hung the plants in the storage room in my basement. A new day, a new dawn, and even more flowers to collect. This time, I actually found a pair of clippers, which made my life so much easier. Once I was done collecting even more flowers, I set up outside. Just a forewarning, no matter what you do, <laughs> there will be pollen, lots of pollen. The flowers that I collected from my yard are mums, coxcomb, and some kind of grass. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It looks kind of like pompous grass, but it dried really well. The mums dry kind of brownish orange. They're a lot more muted after they've finished drying, but I was kind of expecting that. The coxcomb dried really, really well and retained a lot of its color. Using some dry foam that I bought at Michael's, I cut it to fit a small silver dish. Now, I am not a professional florist. I do not claim to be, but I do enjoy working with flowers. This was one of my first times working with dry foam, and I really enjoyed it. The flowers stick into it super easy, and it's easy to cut. I cut it with a kitchen knife. That being said, if you choose to do this project, please be careful while using knives, scissors, and garden tools. Starting out, I kind of just began randomly placing plants while also looking for a bit of symmetry. As you can see further on in the project, there is a very noticeable fan shape to kind of replicate the shape of the dish. But there's still some asymmetry going on, which makes it interesting to look at. Keep in mind that I incorporated plants that I dried myself and also several plants that I purchased. You can actually buy dried flowers from 
craft stores, and I even found some at Walmart. Shortly afterwards, I started a second arrangement. This one was in more of a round shaped dish, so in a way the arrangement also seemed to replicate the shape of the dish. The nice thing about the floral foam is the flowers stick into it really nicely and don't move. Next, I decided to attempt making a matching wreath. Now, I think this is my first time making a wreath with a metal ring. Normally, I use a more plant-based structure for the round part of the wreath. I bunched all of my plants together. I think the most time-consuming part was just making these little bunches. To hold the plants together, I cut pieces of wire that were roughly about six inches long and wrapped them three or four times very tightly around the base of each bunch. Once I finished wrapping the wire around the bunch, I cut off the excess and left the tail end of wire. Make sure you leave this because you'll need it later to attach the bunch to the metal ring. Once you have all of your bunches ready, you can start attaching them to the ring. I found the easiest way to do this was to wrap the wire tightly around the plant and the ring several times and then slide it down. This way you could hide the wire and make everything a bit more cohesive. The wreath was definitely the most time consuming because of all the wire wrapping and the bunching. I think I may actually go back later and add some more wire to kind of hold everything into place. This was also the most messy of the projects. So there you have it. Overall, it's an incredibly fun project and I highly recommend giving it a try. It is a lot of work and it is very time consuming, but it's so worth it in the end. I do recommend if you don't have certain plants available to you, checking out craft stores and even Amazon and other websites to see if they have dried florals available for purchase. They're relatively inexpensive and they're pretty easy to work with. One of the reasons I've been playing around with dried florals is because they last a really long time and I was thinking that if I do them for my wedding, I can make them well in advance and just put them into storage so that when the week of the wedding rolls around, I won't be stressing about putting floral arrangements together. Now this was my first time working with dried florals and I'm sure I still have a lot to learn. So if you've worked with dried florals before, and have some tips, tricks, pointers, add them in the comments below. I would love to see that. Also, did any of you do dried florals for your wedding? If you did, how did it turn out? What were the pros and cons? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about that as well. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, hit the notification bell button because I will be posting cool DIY and lifestyle videos every single week. And I would love for you all to join me on my DIY wedding planning adventure, because it's going to be fun. Well, until the next video, I am out. Bye.